What's up guys, it's Anders here for Audio Plugin Deals. And today we're having a look at this plugin called Spectrum 2, which is basically a multi-frequency analyzer, meaning it can show you the frequency analysis of multiple sounds at once. You're probably thinking, okay, well, how's that useful? I've got my analyzer on every EQ channel. Well, it's really useful to be able to see them side by side so that you can do various things in your mix and really understand what's going on. Um, instead of me sort of explaining it, let's jump on and I'll show you why it's useful. If you find the plugin useful, well, you should jump on to Audio Plugin Deals because it's on a heavy discount right now. Let's uh, jump into Logic and I'll show you why this thing's so damn good. All right, so let me show you why a plugin like this is so useful for you and can really help you improve your mixing. First things first, it's got a feature that I absolutely love. Down here in the corner, we can expand it and make it larger. Perfecto. Let's say on this mix, I'm really struggling with the balance of my drums, maybe things are getting in the way of one another and the kit's not particularly well balanced. Well, I can use this tool to see exactly what's going on rather than diving in with an EQ and having to sort of chop and look at different analyzers. I can get it all up on one screen. So on here at the moment, it's just on, it's just on the kick drum. Well, what I can do is I can copy Spectrum over to all of the other drum channels. And as I do that, the one that's on the kick drum actually, as you can see, shows up the other things. I don't know why I've called this intro Reese, but it's the kick drum. Let's, uh, let's just not question me. Bring it over to another. It shows up on the break, for example. Super useful. Let's bring it over onto the drum kits as well. And as you can see, they all show up in there. So let's just solo up the drums. Okay. So now I've got this kind of weird, uncalculated mess of green. Well, I can assign a different color to each one. So this one where it's named Reese, I could actually just double click it and rename it Kick, which makes a lot more sense, doesn't it? And what we'll do is we can just highlight them in sort of conflicting colors. So, you know, the kick can be green, but let's make the snare red. And I can see where that's really sim. And then the drum break that sits across everything, let's make that blue. And then everything else is kind of percussion based. So let's make all of the percussion stuff kind of like a, a darkish yellow. I can just check that they're not getting in the way. Happy days, right? So let me just use the icon up in the top right to freeze that. So now I can see I've got this layered balance and I can see the different sounds and where they're escaping through. I can see that the kick, for example, is prominent here. It escapes past all of the other low end bits that seem to be in there. And I can see that the snare escapes above everything else in its sort of high end. And then I can see the different conflicts between the percussions and things like that going on. I can see amongst all of these, I've kind of got loads of low end going on. But actually, if we look at it, we've got our scale here with zero dB being right up the top uh, and then kind of drifting all the way off. You know, these things are like minus 120 dB on the low end. That's no big issue. But if I was concerned about them, I now know that I can dive in with the EQ, perhaps on each channel and just roll out those low ends knowing that they don't need to be there. The other thing is I can get rid of all of these and just work on the three that are really conflicting or the two that are really conflicting, perhaps the kick and the snare. We'll just unfreeze them. I can see that they're not really fighting. The weight of the kick is getting out of the way of the snare, but I do have this extra bit of low end going on around here in the snare. I wasn't aware of that before. So what I could do, I could grab my EQ, I could roll that away and just check it in context again. You see there's a lot less of that going on now. There's a couple of other things that I can do here. I can get a lot more detailed with it as well. Block size just here, if we bring that right up, it becomes far more detailed in what it's showing us. It does use a lot more CPU though. But now we can really see those individual frequencies and where everything's setting through. And we can see that the kick and the snare, they're not really fighting together. However, when we bring the brake in, the brake's really busy. It covers the full spectrum, but I still want this kick and this snare to be poking through.
And look here, we can see that at times the break is now really affecting the snare. It's going to be outweighing it. So I could now take a look with the EQ on the break. I could take out some key areas. For example, if I wanted the fundamental of my snare layer to be the main thing in there, I could tackle it just here and take it away. Or <coughs> I could really, by the looks of it, um, around the 2K kind of region here, we could make a dip in this EQ. And that's going to help our red snare look poke through a little bit more in that key area. No, so that's just one example. Now, how about instruments sitting in the way of vocals? Well, we can check those out as well. Now, this time I'm going to have the vocals just on a bus channel so that everything lands in this one. I'll be able to see my vocals in here. Heart is on my sleeve, love is then the instruments, for example, we could do those separately so we could really figure out which ones are causing any conflicts. Look at that, we've got lots of noise on the piano, but it's all sitting nice and low. Again, we've got our meter on the left here. Heart is on my sleeve, love is cold on a winter, frozen to the core, thoughts of you, there's a linger, longing for the darkness and leaving a whisper, bring my love back. Okay, so let's make these really dramatic. Let's go for a really bright red for our vocals. We can definitely always see it. Heart is on my sleeve, love is cold on a winter. Frozen to the core, thoughts of you, there's a linger long All right, so we can see something that's really battling with our vocal is going to be probably this here. Heart is on my sleeve, love is cold on a winter. So we can winter. hide the other Frozen two. The core, of you, and we can see they really longing share the same the frequency space. And that's going to be the piano. So what I could do now is look to maybe adjust this mid frequency here, just below 1K. Um, perhaps something like a multiband side chain, just so the vocal controls bringing down that piano just in that area. Because up here in the high end, it just pokes through every now and then and sounds really nice. But here they're kind of fighting each other. And then in the context of the mix, we end up sounding like this. Heart is on my sleeve, love is cold on a winter. Frozen to the core, thoughts of you, there's a linger. Longing for the dark, nothing leaving a whisper. Bring my love back. Heart is on my sleeve, love is cold on a winter. Frozen to the core, thoughts of you, there's a linger. Bring my love back. I really want that in a heartbeat, but there's no going back. Yeah, another way we could approach it, we can see a lot of the same frequencies are being shared around 1K. Wasn't really aware of that before, but I could now grab an EQ on the piano and I could very simply just make a little dip around the 1K area like that, which is going to be the main sort of focus area on our vocal. And well, it pokes through a lot more now. Now, if I just want to focus on one thing here, what I can do is use this uh, and it solos the one that we've got selected. You know, that little bit of information there has really helped the vocal pop out just with the tiniest little EQ. That's all the adjustment we've made. But you can really hear how the vocal pops out. Now, the other thing is we can see a lot of this unwanted low end. Wasn't really aware that was happening. So we can essentially roll that out as well a little bit further than we did before. And 
at the other thing where the piano pokes through a little bit sort of around the 4k region we could just help that out we could give it the tiniest little bump now with the EQ just so it pokes through the vocal a little bit more to counteract that we're losing sort of that 1k focus zone let's just a b that but I think that's going to have really improved the balance Heart is on the Yeah, really, really simple thing to do once you've got that information. It's something that'd be really hard to pick out and figure out with your ears alone, but being able to see it all on one screen super super valuable to you what you should do guys is check out audio plugin deals this is on a heavy heavy discount over there um, it's very very useful tool especially if you're working headphones a lot and you need to constantly sort of check between different sounds and you're struggling with that mix element having this to look at and just go oh right that's why this is happening and seeing that things conflict with one another super useful information for you my biggest advice is don't rely on it all the time don't use it as uh, your go-to still use your ears and get everything as close as you can but if you really can't figure something out this tool lets you dive in deeply and you can have a look at those different elements really quickly and easily to help improve them so yeah, there's just two uses of being able to see the different sounds in your mix side by side and how they're conflicting. Like it would have been really difficult for me to understand that that sort of 1K region in the piano was sitting banging the same point as the vocal. I would have had to have narrowed it down, got to that point, listened to the piano being the issue, then kind of swept through and swept through the vocal. But instead I could just see that, oh right, okay, they've both got these same frequencies happening around 1K and the piano is just drowning out those key pickup points on the vocal. Because I could see it so easily, I knew how to go in and start fixing it and A, B it with EQ. Um, it just helps in those kinds of situations, especially as you're learning to mix and you can just get those finer details. Like my mix sounds good, like the track sounds all right, but it's just those fine little tiny details that really take it to the next level. So what you do, Go download Spectrum 2 and give it a whirl on your next track and see if it improves your mix. I've been Unders guys and I will see you on the next one. Bye.